Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. Which you have is Game of Thrones, Episode 1. Not to be confused with the previous Game of Thrones titles on Steam, which are all frankly terrible. When I heard Telltale had got a hold of this license, it seemed kind of like a match made in heaven, really. Game of Thrones is about intrigue, Game of Thrones is about tough choices, no-win scenarios, and that's the sort of thing that would work quite well in Telltale's framework. And rest assured, they have used their framework once again. As with the Tales from the Borderlands video, everything in the background is going to be a spoiler. This will be the first 15 or so minutes and I've got the volume down nice and low, so if you just want to listen to me talk about the game, you can do that, just minimize the window. Of course, if you're looking to avoid any form of spoilers, well, you shouldn't be watching this. It's it's just impossible. These are narrative games after all, so let's get right into it. So Game of Thrones is developed by Telltale, and you can tell immediately that it's developed by Telltale simply due to the style that it is presented in. It is, once again, a very narratively driven experience. You'll probably hear me contrast it a lot with the very recent tales from the Borderlands. It seems relevant considering. And Telltale has settled into this nice framework that they alter kind of slightly depending on their subject matter. Tales from the Borderlands, at least episode one anyway, was more of a comedic experience. It had a couple of interesting mechanics based on which character you were playing, which opened up additional options and also allowed you to read a lot more of the Borderlands lore and find out a lot more of the humor. From what I could tell, there weren't a huge number of really meaningful choices in the first episode, and it seemed to be certainly less heavy than some of the other titles like The Walking Dead and Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is heavy, and that's to be expected. It throws very tough choices at you right out of the gate. Indeed, you'll get one within the first 10 or so minutes, which very much affects the rest of the game. It forces you to make that decision very quickly and without very much knowledge, and yet it has significant impact. The conversation system is identical to the other Telltale games. There don't appear to be any additional mechanics tacked on. Indeed, there don't appear to be any additional mechanics at all anywhere in the game. All of the fighting is done through QTE in the same way that you've seen in previous titles like The Wolf Among Us. There is a little bit more walking around and picking up things, and there appear to actually be choices related to that. There are items you can pick up or decide not to pick up because perhaps they don't belong to you. There are a couple of examples of that in the first episode. But the focus is on dialogue and in making tough calls. Within the first 15 minutes of the game, things go really, really badly and they don't get any better, which is frankly exactly what you would expect from Game of Thrones. It really fits the series and the license perfectly in that regard. And things are tense the entire way through. It's that tension that I think really sells the Game of Thrones adventure game. Tales from the Borderlands was very flippant, it was very light-hearted, not a tense experience. Game of Thrones, I would say, is on the level, perhaps even further still, than The Walking Dead when it comes to tension. And it's less about moral choice and more about the grey areas when it comes to Game of Thrones. There are many scenarios that don't seem to really have a right answer, and you're trying to navigate the tense political landscape and the backstabbing of the world of Westeros, and you have to do so under very tense time constraints, which means that the whole game just leaves you on edge. I mean, it doesn't even give you a break. You get to play three different characters, one of which is in King's Landing, which is awesome because you get to meet some very familiar characters using all their familiar voice actors as well. And what I found is that the voice acting was pretty much solid across the board. Nobody phoned it in, which is nice considering we have had some recent instances of celebrity voice actors kind of phoning it in lately. Peter Dinklage. <coughs> Sorry about that. I had to clear my throat there. But when it comes to this title, they have taken their roles very seriously. Cersei is as menacing as ever. Tyrion is as flippant as ever. And the new characters that you're introduced to perhaps don't have the strongest starts, but it is very interesting seeing them interact with some of the major characters who already have established personalities. What you're seeing of these new characters and their character progression in the context of their interaction with known characters, which is fantastic. And the game doesn't pull any punches. I had something of a fear, and I still do to some degree, that Telltale wouldn't be willing to go far enough. We are dealing with a video game after all. Game of Thrones is absolutely brutal in many, many ways, and it touches on very nasty subject matter that video games don't really necessarily deal with all that well, and when they attempt to do it, they often get criticized for it, which to me seems ludicrously unfair when HBO is able to get away with pretty much everything. 
and yet video games are pointed at and sneered at as being this very paradoxical mix of an inferior medium with something that is supposedly capable of causing players to develop negative and even violent attitudes despite the complete lack of scientific proof of said accusation. But anyway, I'm going off a slight tangent there. Regardless, I am a little scared still that Telltale will not be able to, or will not be willing to do what it takes to really make this as grim and morally ambiguous as possible. If the first episode is anything to go by, well, they've got the chops for it. I think their experience with Walking Dead has certainly helped. Although this is no doubt a franchise that many people will go through with a fine tooth comb. This episode is extremely choice heavy. And that comes on to both its greatest strength and the series' greatest potential weakness. Just how much of a difference do these choices really make? It's a criticism people made of The Walking Dead Season 1, and rightfully so, that a lot of those choices really didn't actually matter. It didn't make that much of a difference. It does seem like some of these choices must. I, I can't see a situation where that could not be the case. Although there are some events that are clearly hard-coded and there's no way you're going to really be able to get around them. The game is constantly reminding you that a character's got to remember that, or that it's affected their particular judgment of you. It's doing it a lot, more so than Tales of the Borderlands ever did. And I have noted that some of my choices earlier in the episode clearly affected dialogue later on. But the question is, what does it do later on in the game? What I want to see, this is my ideal goal here, what I want to see is a game that actually allows complete and total failure by the end of it. The complete destruction of everything you hold dear. Because that's Game of Thrones in a nutshell. I do not want to see characters wearing plot armor all the time. It's vitally important that characters be able to be killed off and for good reason. And even more so I feel that in some scenarios characters are saved from such a fate due to your own choices. If they manage to nail all of those things down then Game of Thrones is going to be cracking. I made my way through the two and a half hour first episode and I... I wouldn't say I enjoyed it, I said I was on the edge of my seat. I was tense and I was worried about all of my choices. I was worried about saying the wrong thing constantly. And that's exactly what I would have wanted from a game like this. I don't want the dialogue to be flippant, I want it to matter. I want the diplomatic elements and the war of words, the verbal sparring, to be the key focus of this title. And it seems like that's exactly what it is. I just hope it's not an illusion. Now, outside of that, the graphical style is fairly standard Telltale, honestly. This time around, they've used something of an oil painting filter over the characters, which I think works. It means that there's nothing particularly bright, everything's very much pastel, and that suits the Game of Thrones universe, there's no doubt about that. Although I'm not a huge fan of it on a technical level, because a lot of it looks a little strange. The edges of objects are frequently aliased, regardless of the fact that I actually have anti-aliasing turned on in the options menu, and there's a lot of very strange visual artifacts involved involving glimmering on certain objects and texture resolution on many of the props is also really quite low. I also noticed some subpar animations from time to time. It's not like Telltale has ever really been particularly brilliant at the animation quality of their characters, but in this game it did stand out particularly. Now, this could just be due to a lack of polish. The build that they uploaded and gave to the press was actually made on Wednesday, just before the Thanksgiving holiday, and they stated in the email that they sent that the build was not fully polished and that there might be some minor visual issues. Some of that stuff could be fixed on launch, but obviously I've got to judge it by the build that I was given, so I'm just going to make you aware of that. When it comes to the options menu, it's very standard Telltale Affair, which means bare bones and a lack of key rebinding is a problem. The anti-aliasing, as I mentioned, doesn't really seem to actually do anything. It hasn't taken the rough edges off the objects at all, and there are certainly some blurry elements. It does make me feel like they've used a form of approximate anti-aliasing, such as FXAA, which is not particularly effective. So this may be a game that you want to try and inject a form of anti-aliasing into rather than relying on the in-game AA. And outside of that, not many graphical options really to speak of, and the very standard normal or minimum interface options, which means that it's going to show you stuff and remind you someone's going to remember that, someone's not going to remember that, and you can turn that off if you so desire. So I would still like to see some improvements here. We have the same problem that was in Tales of the Borderlands, 
in the sense that they don't have a separate voice volume slider. That needs to be fixed. I didn't encounter any sections of the game where it was a problem, whereas I did in Tales from the Borderlands, but that's probably because this game doesn't have cars, so there's something to be said for that. But it's something that really does need to be added, and what I'd also like to see is the ability to skip dialogue when I went to another playthrough. I understand why you wouldn't want people skipping dialogue the first time around, but seriously, I really want to be able to play this episode again, because there was a lot of tense dialogue and choices to be made. I'd like to create more saved files, but I'm not willing to go through the same damn dialogue and not be able to skip it. This is something that Telltale, in my opinion, should be implementing across the board. I understand you want people to experience your narrative, but what about the second and third time around when I already know what's going to happen? I do wonder if it's a deliberate choice to discourage multiple saved files because they want people to commit to the choices that they've made. And I can kind of understand that, but sorry, player choice must come first in all scenarios. If a player wishes to skip your artistic vision, then please let them skip your artistic vision because really it's their personal enjoyment that is priority one and not everybody experiences games in the same way and we should be willing to respect that. Outside of the conversations, mechanically the game doesn't really have an awful lot to it. There's a little bit more walking around than I found in Tales from the Borderlands and it's the same old walking around, just like Walking Dead, just like Borderlands, just like The Wolf Among Us. It's somewhat clunky. It was clearly designed to be played with a controller, although thankfully the sequences do not really require any kind of precision. So while you might find moving around with the keyboard a, a little frustrating, it doesn't really matter, honestly. They've put a couple of instances where you have to use a click and drag gesture, which I've noticed was not in Tales from the Borderlands, but that doesn't really add a great deal to the QTE sequences, frankly. As usual with Telltale games, if you are looking for in-depth mechanics, they are simply not present. But one has to judge this as they would a Telltale game and say, look, the writing in this, at least to me, was spot on. I was really happy with the script. It was suitably political, suitably grey, and suitably menacing at times. The choices felt meaningful, even if they aren't necessarily. They've certainly done a good job of pulling the wool over my eyes, if that were the case. The implementation of the major characters that you know from the series wasn't overdone. They didn't just shove them in there for no reason. There are certainly no cameo appearances. Every one of these characters are in there for a very good reason, and you do get to interact with them extensively, which anyone that watches the television show or reads the novels will very much appreciate, no doubt. If you haven't watched the television show and you've just read the novels, bear in mind that they use voices and likenesses from the TV show. So that might be something that you find a little bit off-putting. Might be true for those of you who just play the Game of Thrones card game as well, because they use a lot of artistic impressions of what they think the characters might look like based on the descriptions of George R.R. R. Martin as opposed to the television show which came out much much later. I think it's very easy to do a fairly short video on Telltale games especially when they come out episodically but again I would say a very strong start for Game of Thrones. This is not a game for the faint of heart or the squeamish. There are certainly some very grim moments in the first episode and that is exactly what I would have expected from a Game of Thrones game. The same caveat applies if you enjoy the subject matter and you don't mind being pulled along by the nose and occasionally asked to make tough calls, then this game will be enjoyable and engrossing to you. If you're looking for a more mechanically orientated experience, a more traditional point and click, or indeed a more traditional role playing game, then this game is not that. Telltale took very few risks with this title as far as I'm concerned, at least from a mechanical standpoint. Whether or not they have done so from a narrative standpoint remains to be seen. We're going to have to see the rest of the episodes and see just how important our choices really were. As someone that very much enjoys the Game of Thrones television show, needless to say, I found this very compelling. I found this true to the subject matter and they've weaved the story in very nicely with the events of Game of Thrones. It, it feels like you are seeing another part of it as opposed to playing a different story entirely. You're seeing different aspects of events that you already know, which is fantastic. I love the way that these can be used as companion pieces of media to flesh out the story, but can stand alone in their own right as a strong narrative. So yeah, good start here from Telltale again. Uh, pretty much hit it out the park in the first episode, at least from a narrative perspective, and I'm looking forward to seeing what comes after that. Let's 
not have any more delays like the Wolf Among Us, shall we? Let's let's get this out nice and quickly. And it would, of course, be nice to see a few additional PC features and the ability to skip dialogue on the second playthrough be implemented. This is, after all, a series that extols the virtues of player choice. That should extend to the ability to choose not to hear the same line for the umpteenth time. Game of Thrones, brought to you by Telltale, ladies and gentlemen. It will be available on the 2nd of December via the usual episodic format. My name has been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.